online, on Radio Player, and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound, the Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to the latest edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show, and in the seven days since the last one, has much happened? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a fantastic point against Brentford, and the same result and outcome against Huddersfield. Bob was dispatched to both games at Adams Park, and uh, uh, spoke to the manager and a couple of players each time. And I also spoke uh, to Pete Kuhig, uh, who confirmed that fans will be allowed back in Adams Park, fingers crossed, from Wednesday for Wickham's game against Stoke City. We will be hearing from Pete very shortly. I knew something else had happened. Uh, and also on the show this evening you'll hear from former Wickham Wanderers striker uh, Keith Scott, who'd spent uh, two spells at the club. Rather enjoyable spells, it must be said as well. Uh, but first, uh, some uh, correspondence. Some in- ca- yes. Indeed. Some, and other notices. Uh, I must say a very good evening to uh, David Alderman, who uh, got in touch to say that he was chuffed to hear his name mentioned last week. Hello! <laughs> Big hello to you. Even more chuffed this week. Two, two weeks in a row. Uh, and hello to Wickham Wanderers ladies. We're not quite sure if they are training tonight, but we do know that they listen to the show um, on the times where they are training. It's normally a Thursday evening. I think they start at, what, half past seven, eight o'clock? Eight o'clock, I think. Eight o'clock, right. So they do normally listen on their way along. Uh, so hello to them if they are training tonight. Yes, because their season is back and uh, their first game is against Abingdon on the 13th of December. Uh, hello also to Ralph Smith, uh, who uh, is one of my son's friends who, who listens, uh, who said that he listened and didn't actually realise that it was Oz... My son, Luke's dad, who does the show. Hello, Ralph, it's me. <laughs> and also, I must say a big hello to Alex Samuel, who's got in touch to say, amazing to hear Rachel's song being played. You guys are awesome. Hello to Rachel as well, and to Alex. Absolutely, hello. yes. Hello! Uh, Ray, Sam and the Great Escape. Thoroughly recommend it. You'll hear that a lot on Wickham Sound. So I think that's all our hellos, isn't it? I think that's all our, all of our hellos for today. If you'd like a hello, then you're very welcome to get in touch. <laughs> yeah, it's we a might new, even say new hello. slot on the show that we're going to do. <laughs> even if you don't want one, we can, we can still say hello. It's, it's no problem. It uh, doesn't cost anything. So, uh, yes, first of all, let's kick off with the, the big news of the, the week. Big news of the season, really. Indeed, yes. Uh, so we, we managed to get Pete Kuhig on uh, the phone. Uh, of course, he was celebrating Thanksgiving today. Um, and apparently the team have been celebrating Thanksgiving as well. Uh, but we're we'll let him tell you more about that but really really good to speak to him that he, he made time um, and it was, was very exciting to hear the fact because I, I didn't assume that actually it was going to be from Wednesday but no apparently fans might be allowed back in from Wednesday yes yeah, so great news so we heard initially that, that fans would be allowed in but we had to wait till today to find out which tier as to exactly how how many and uh, as Bob mentioned he caught up with Pete a short time ago so we've had the the good news today that yeah. obviously Wickham will be in tier two so what does that actually mean with regards to fans coming back to Adams Park well if we would have had a uh, pilot event earlier in the year when a lot of clubs had that would have meant we could actually go to uh, 2000 immediately but because of what it appears the structure is we have to have our t- our pilot event first which is a which is a thousand fans in and and I, I say this with we all of our applications are in uh the sag all the all the different groups that have to approve it or are, are looking at it reviewing it um we did a lot of work early on to make sure that we were everything was correct so uh, we are expecting uh, approval, but it is uh, a time crunch on everybody. Um, but what it does mean is that we'll have a thousand people Wednesday, um, and then the next home match we should, if everything goes according to plan, we should be able to have uh, two thousand. Right. So, so which game are we looking at? So we've got um, obviously uh, Coventry City on the twelfth of December. Um, I'm imagining that maybe Stoke on that Wednesday night. Is that a, that a bit too soon? No, we're we're pushing. That's what we're pushing for. That's what you're pushing. The, uh, uh, excellent, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, pilot event next week. Um, lockdown ends on the second, and uh, our match is on the Wednesday. So uh, we're hoping for approval, and we are planning as though it is going to happen. Fantastic. Um, and so, so how exactly is it going to happen? How are you going to decide which a thousand people it is that are, are going to be allowed in? Well, it's, it's exactly what we said uh, when we release season tickets. Uh, it will be based on the order you purchase your season ticket. Okay, so which again sounds absolutely fair because you were very, very explicit and apparent that that was what was going to happen once we were allowed back in. Yep. Okay, and and so after that, so so then the the two thousand people, fingers crossed, uh, as long as the event goes well, um, that would be the the Coventry City game on the twelfth of December. Yep, and we're actually, you know, I know everybody was in an in, in an agree. You know, the tiers were 
uh, everybody was put in a in a slightly high, higher tier or lower tier, whatever it is. Um, I think we were in tier one up until today. I think maybe. Uh, so we are hoping to get to tier one as soon as possible so that we can have uh, our maximum capacity allowed under the socially distanced protocols or whatever new rules there that that are that do exist. And when fans are allowed back in, presumably they're not necessarily going to be in their normal seats, their their normal places. Um, you know that that's going to be restricted as well. Yes, yeah, correct. Yes. Um, so what we are trying and preparing to do is for next Wednesday have individual tickets that people can print out that has their seat number that they're assigned for that match uh, to make it easy. Okay, and when they go into the stadium, are you expecting to um, be doing temperature checks and that sort of thing? <laughs> uh, well, you know, we're actually kind of waiting on guidance. There's a few different ways that have been proposed to do, uh, and, and we do have a plan. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure I remember if it's individual temperature checks or not. If it's required, we're going to do it. If it's not, uh, there's a there's a questionnaire. There's there's actually a few questions. As we've developed the plan over the last couple of days, we were actually hoping to see a little bit more clarity on the rules and regulations today. But honestly, I've been running around, so I haven't actually read the uh, actual release. I don't know if we actually. Uh, do have updated rules and regulations yet? No, well, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, that all of the information that we've had coming out of the government, it's always been a bit, bit. You know, it, it takes a little while to actually get the the detail. Um, yeah. But you know, at, at least it's all positive. Uh, what we've heard so far, um, and yes, so you know, fans can obviously expect a slightly different experience when they they come into Adams Park. But it's just going to be wonderful to have them back um, and for them to see all of the changes that that you guys have been making over the the last few months yeah no doubt um you know obviously the park looks a little bit looks a lot different um but i can tell you everybody's more excited about seeing uh, our at least some of our supporters in at first and then more and more hopefully as the uh season goes on yeah, and I, I think one of the things that has been so obvious, I mean, particularly the last two games uh, against Brentford and Huddersfield, uh, you know, Wickham had some great chances, particularly towards the end. And we all know what happens, actually, when that terrace is full of fans uh, just basically willing the ball into the net. Look, I'm certain we would have more points if we'd have had our supporters in at Adams Park all year, uh, 100%, um, without a doubt. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking, for, it's been, uh, you know, it's been lonely in Adams Park during the matches. Uh, I think I told you this maybe last week that, um, may sound weird, but, uh, the, the atmosphere is so strange behind closed doors. I actually, at this point, almost prefer watching our guys on TV versus, um, live. Uh, but everybody knows I'm kind of a crazy American, so maybe that's... <laughs> Yeah, and and speaking of which, so so it is Thanksgiving today. You are a long, long way from home. Yeah. Uh, are, yeah. Uh, are you looking forward? Are you having some turkey this evening? Uh, actually, had it uh, for lunch. Uh, uh, gave a last minute notice to the training ground chef yesterday. Asked him if he could put together a little Thanksgiving meal for the players and staff, and he did. Uh, we actually also for the office. Had uh, one of the local restaurants, La Talata, who's been doing a lot of work with us um, this year to uh, make a Thanksgiving lunch for the office staff as well. So brought a little America to uh, High Wickham today. Fantastic. And uh, will you be catching up with some of the, the football that, that's going to be on later on tonight? Do you mean gridiron? Of course I do, I, yes. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I actually watch a lot more football than American football, especially nowadays. Um, I am a long time season. I, you know, I'm a huge American football fan and nut, but, um, you know, I kind of only watch the Saints, and uh, we aren't on today. So, um, But I will be watching some of that, uh, you know, at least until the European football starts, for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the Saints, they're not doing too bad, are they? Uh, eight- no, nah, we're, we're killing it. Eight, eight and two at the minute. Uh, you know, you, you, you're doing pretty well. You're, you're supporting two teams there that are very much on the up at the moment. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Maybe, you know, uh, we've, we've been trying to tell you the Cougs are pretty lucky people. <laughs>
Absolutely, yeah. The, the, look, you know, you, you don't need to tell us that. I think, you know, if, we, if we're going to give thanks for anything today in Wickham, it is the fact that the Higgs came along and that they were interested in this little club in Buckinghamshire. We are very, very grateful for that. Well, I can promise you this. We are very thankful with how everybody has embraced this, uh, for sure. Um, thankful for all the new friends and new family that we've got. Well, yeah, I think, you know, we're, we would echo that as well, uh, you know, and, and just the way that you have taken to to our football club, the way that you support, you know, Gareth and Dobbo as well and all of the players, you know, it is it is wonderful. I appreciate that, Bob. That, that means a lot. Great to hear from uh, Pete. Fantastic to catch up with him and get his thoughts, especially on Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to, to show him that actually we were very thankful because you can imagine some takeovers uh, where when the manager had lost seven games in a row, that actually suddenly the, the, the new owners think, well, hang on a minute, this, this guy isn't the guy. Um, and, you know, and, and we all obviously know that, yes, he really, really is. And the great thing about the Kuwaitis is that they completely get that. Mm. Um, you know, I, I heard one of the journalists um, chatting um, before the, the game. I'm trying to, trying to remember now which game it was. I think it was before the Watford game um, and saying, you know, it, it's incredible that any other club we would now be talking about, you know, the manager here being under a lot of threat, a lot of pressure. You look at what's happened at Sheffield Wednesday, at Nottingham Forest, at Derby. And he said, but, you know, at Wickham, it's completely the other way around. Gareth Ainsworth is the safest manager in the EFL. There's no question at all that, you know, that he's going to be sacked. Um, and, and exactly that, you know, it, it's great. The Kuhiks, they just get it. They haven't come in looking to change anything. They haven't said, oh, well, hang on, you know, seven games in a row. Uh, without without a win without without even a draw we we're, we're going to change things they kept with gareth um and yeah i think we're in very good hands for the future it's interesting isn't it how people from outside if you like can view something i remember reading a, a review of one of the games i think it was after the the sixth defeat in a row and they're saying oh this is the worst start in in the championship since since i think it was colchester in 2006 and so and you think well it's a very sort of negative way to be looking at it really for a club which is you know fresh into the division yeah completely uh before the reading game there were a couple of, of jolly mm. reading journalists who were then saying oh does anyone know what the record is for for teams not winning beforehand and they sort of looked around at a couple of us that were clearly of the Wickham persuasion and we all just ignored them because it was just like well you know no sorry we're not going to join in this sort of like jolly game of oh how many get you know because no you know we're here for a reason we deserve to be here despite what they keep harping on about up at Peterborough um you know no, we're not going to enter into that. We're not just here to make up the numbers. We are Wickham Wanderers, and we are a hundred percent sure that actually we are going to compete in this division. And you know, and it's now just proving that actually, yeah, we were completely right in our assumption that we could compete in this division. Um, and the results, you know, are, are now changing and starting to go our way. And two fantastic performances, you know, Brentford. Clearly a team that was tipped to go up. They were in the playoff final last year. Uh, you know, that was a really, really good performance. Huddersfield as well, a team that was was in the Premier League fairly recently. Uh, and, you know, and we got a point out of both of them. Clean sheet. Fantastic. I do like the idea of jolly journalists as well. That's, uh... <laughs> they, they just were. It was just, you know, it was slightly as if we were all meant to join in this this, this jolly game of, you know, oh, what's the record loss? Oh, yes, you know, is, is it you? Yeah, no, no, it's not. You know, just go away. Thank you very much. Such welcome news, though, that fans will be returning to Adams Park and uh, hopefully more and more as the season progresses. It's the theme of our online poll this evening. We're asking for your thoughts and what you're most looking forward to about returning to Adams Park. You can get in touch with us uh, on Twitter via uh, the Wickham Sound at Wickham Sound you can tweet us uh, using the hashtag TWWS and we'll be uh, we'll be reading out some of those as the uh, as the show progresses first though uh, those two games which have happened since our last program of course both at home both uh, against um, pretty decent sides in uh, both Brentford of course who are challenging for the Premier League and Huddersfield as Bob said who've recently been in the top flight themselves uh, a nil-nil draw on Saturday uh, Bob caught up with manager Gareth Ainsworth afterwards Gareth a super super point played really really well today I thought yeah I thought so as well finished the stronger I thought out the two teams as well which was great uh, I think if anyone was going on to win that game it was going to be us um, unfortunately we never got it but um, I'd have took a point before the game believe me um, you know, doubles for Oryx on the road um, were, were brilliant with those six points. And, and then, you know, point either side with, with Watford and, and Brentford, I think we're, we're looking good. We're looking solid. Clean sheet again, which is really, really good and, and something to build on. But 
some of the players out there were just phenomenal and uh, the efforts that we give um, they never stop never ever stop you know and uh, and I could pick individuals out but I will pick out the unit the 18 the 25 squad that we've got because they all have played a part today and, uh, and I'm, I'm loving where we are at the moment I mean we're looking like a decent championship side now well, we're not a walkover and that's, that's the big thing you know um, probably the first four games me and Dobbo were really getting used to this league seeing exactly what it was about and I think from that first international break right back in, in, in August, September you know, I thought since then you know, your Reddings, your, your Millwalls your, your Norwiches and, and your Watfords I think we've always been in the games we've had some real fantastic performance the wins came Forest, yeah, probably ran out of legs at the end of a tough, tough week. And uh, but now the five sub rulers come in. I'm hoping that won't happen, and we can attack these next run of fixtures with uh, with some real courage and and belief that we we can stay in this championship. Because it is now a little bit brutal all the way through until Christmas, isn't it? <laughs> you have really underestimated that. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a it is going to be a tough, tough challenge. You know, these games coming up. So. Um, some of the teams, it's like a, it's like an FA Cup run, you know. This is it's brilliant to see this this club for 133 years. This is the highest they play. We've got all these games coming out. I just wish the fans were allowed back in because I believe if, if those fans had been in that that end, that home end this this afternoon, they'd have, they'd have sucked that ball into the net. You know, we've seen it happen time and time again. Unfortunately, they're not. I'm really looking forward to when they're allowed back in. But um, that points for everyone who's uh, who supported Wickham and this championship I'm loving loving the challenge looking forward to the next one which is Tuesday and finally how are you I, I thought maybe we'd see you in slippers or something like that this afternoon but no you've got the normal boots on Absolutely. you're looking good not a chance you know the snakeskins will be out soon I'll tell you because I'm feeling a million dollars I've got a great physio team uh, Kian Ali and uh, and Isaac they've been looking after me you know and uh, and I'm uh, I'm fit and raring to go I, I think you know the way I'm going a couple more weeks I might be on the pitch myself you never know but uh, at the moment I don't think I get a place because these lot are playing phenomenal I don't think I've ever heard someone say that beat after a nil nil draw before <laughs> uh, and I bet he's really really grinning from ear to ear tonight with regards to the news about the fans uh, because he's mentioned it pretty much every interview every time that I've spoken to him after a game particularly at Adams Park you know he always mentions the fans the fact that you know he's missing them uh, so I'm sure yes uh, that he will be grinning from ear to ear this evening and really great to have him back on the touchline as well yeah absolutely uh, you know and yes he was in full rock and roll get up um, so both games now I think it's been the sandy coloured boots and the, the, the black leather jacket uh, looking like the, the rock god that we know that he is and he's got a Guns and Roses face he covering did, as well, yes, he? yes yeah. so that was on Saturday the Guns and Roses face covering looked, looked very impressive um, and yeah and they, you know he apparently he, he does very much like dressing up um, in, in the guise of various rock bands so I was speaking to a QPR fan who said that he had done a uh, a, a, a Appeared on one of their quizzes, I think that they did over the first lockdown. Oh, he did it in full it, Gene Simmons it, get-up, didn't he? He did it in full, full Kiss get-up. Yes, uh, you know, and, and so yes, I wonder whether, whether one day he might actually appear as Axel Rose. That would be quite entertaining, <laughs> having Axel on the sideline. And Saturday was also a momentous day for, for Dominic Gate because it meant he he played in all, all the tears. Uh, yes, indeed, that's that's very true. I mean, obviously, it's now slightly tempered with the fact that he did come off injured um, in mm. Tuesday night's game. Um, but the interview you're about to hear, yes, was after he'd played. Uh, in the game against Brentford. Yes, don't speak to Bob, you might come off injured the next game. <laughs> A happier end to the last time that you played Brentford. Yeah, uh, personally, same result, same result. So, um, yeah, like I said, it's nice, nice to, almost ironic that I was coming back out for, to return against Brentford, but it was nice to contribute to a, to a point, to a good point towards our league campaign it must have been really hard over the last couple of months to be watching the team take part in the championship and not be a part of it when you've been a part of so many great Wickham games in the past yeah um, I was biding, biding my time using the time that I did have to try and get stronger and fitter I knew this is a very physical and competitive league so I, I was gearing myself up I've done lots of really good gym work uh, the, the physio department Ali Isaac Kian have been fantastic with me to get me fit and strong and I feel in a good place so yeah it was a frustrating two months but I feel like I've come through that now and I'm in a good spot and the team are now looking like a championship team which I think is brilliant yeah um, I mean I don't know how the other boys felt out there but I felt like it was good graft I, fe I felt like it I felt like we were resolute and uh, I don't think there was too much in the game, to be honest. No, I mean, you certainly didn't look overwhelmed in a way that, say, the, the Blackburn away game, you know, that, that was obviously a bit of a wake-up call. But this afternoon against one of the promotion uh, favourites, a team that has second-best uh, scorers in the championship, and you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, and you could have easily got, uh, snuck it at, at the end. Yeah, I mean, they were playoff finalists last year, so 
a, a very, very, very good team, and they'll go and beat a lot of teams this year. So, like you said, with the top goal scorer in the league, so yes, yeah, credit credit to the boys. I thought defence, Rock Rocky made a hell of a save in the first half, um, and that's what we're going to need. We're going to need to be resolute. We're going to need to to step up to the test against good players, and I thought we really did that today. Um, so yeah, I think the whole team, one to eleven, and the subs, really, really performed today. Really good to hear from Dominic Gape as well. It's fantastic because you don't often hear. Um, well, not unless you see them in, in supermarkets. You don't often hear. You don't <laughs> yeah, often get to hear from the to. players, do you? Uh, no, that's that's very true. Um, he, he was dripping wet, so he had just been in an ice bath. He was standing there in a t-shirt and shorts. Uh, you know, it was freezing. I was cold, and I was wearing a big coat. Uh, so I, I was very impressed that, that he came out and chatted to us. Uh, of course, the the other game that he played in this season uh, was the game against Brentford, the the opening uh, game in the League Cup, where of course he got sent off after 47 minutes very very harshly. Um, but anyway, so so a much happier end uh, to to the latest game against Brentford. Thank you for explaining. Uh, still to come, we'll catch up with some post-match reaction to the Huddersfield draw on Tuesday night as well, in a game which, bizarrely, started at seven and was done by just after nine. How odd. I will also hear from Keith Scott next, here at Wickham Sound. Love music. Love talk. Love Wickham Sound. <laughs> Welcome back to the second half, or third, uh, of the Wicked Wanderers show. Still to come, we'll hear from Jack Grimmer and Gareth Ainsworth on the back of uh, a fantastic point against Huddersfield. Not looking too bad in the table currently, is it? it it's looking all right, isn't it? Uh, it was a shame that um, uh, Cardiff couldn't beat Coventry last night. That, that would have been even better. And Sheffield uh, Wednesday drew, didn't they? Uh, they did, yeah, but that wasn't too bad. Uh, at least Derby lost again. Yes. Steve McLaren showing his, his magic touch <laughs> once again. <laughs> Do you think he had an uh, umbrella Brent with Park. him? Sorry? Do you think he had an umbrella with him? Uh, possibly he did, yes. Yes, it'll be interesting to see if he's, if he's got one on Saturday. I might, I might save that up for, for one of the interviews. <laughs> you, can, you can have that. Yeah. See if Gareth has an umbrella. Uh, I, no, go, okay. Gareth, Gareth, Gareth would not have an umbrella. <laughs> I can tell what your question is going to be. Straight away, uh, you know, I can tell you, Gareth, I don't think we will ever see Gareth at a football game holding an umbrella. In umbrella, in brolly news? Yes. No, he'd just get wet, wouldn't he? You know, if you're of a certain age, you'll know what we're on about. But actually, if you're if you're quite young, you, you he wouldn't have even have a hood, would he, on his, on no. his coat? Or something. Dear, oh dear, the jacket that wouldn't be any good. Lost to Croatia. If you, <laughs> not Gareth. Did. If you no, regularly listen to the show, you'll know that <laughs> we often like to chat to former players. And uh, this week, uh, we're speaking to former striker Keith Scott, and uh, kicking off with uh, how he became a Wickham Wanderers player. Martin O'Neill was looking for a striker. He, he came to watch Boston play because Paul Gavell, Caffell was playing there. Paul Caffell, sorry. And obviously I was there on loan from Lincoln City and sort of Martin O'Neill was introduced to me after the game. And then he came to watch me play against um, Nottingham Forest in a reserve game on the Wednesday. Because in those days, even though you was on loan at another club, you could always also play in, in your parent club's um, reserve games. So I played in that, and uh, weirdly enough, Stuart Cash was playing for Nottingham Forest. And then after that, Martin O'Neill sort of um, spoke to um, the Lincoln manager then um, and sort of said, can I take him on loan with a, with a view to buying him? And I, and I came on loan at Wickham. And then obviously um, he made that sort of that move permanent. I, could, I think I initially went for a month, and then after the month he sort of made the move permanent. You must have so enjoyed the, your, the football and the style of football that was being played because I've, I've seen some clips recently as well and, and you forget what a sort of great entertaining attacking style of, of play that that team had. Yeah, yeah, you do, you know, and if you look at, it, it, it's, I suppose I suppose in a lot of sport, you, you know, when you, when you actually either leave or you retire and you look back, you sort of realise the sort of players we had, you know, you, you, had, you had Steve Guppy, uh, you had Dave Carroll, we had Simon Hutchinson, who didn't play a lot because of the other two. Ty Gooden came on board as well. Um, so we had we had really four very very good wingers, um, each with different qualities. You know, and if you look at their background, with the exception of Dave Cowell, you know, Gups was at, I think was at Southampton as a kid. Uh, Simon Hutchinson had come from Manchester United. He'd been in Manchester United youth team. Ty Gooden was at, was at Arsenal. So we had some really good players. And if you go into midfield, you had Simon Stapleton, Keith Ryan. You know, and we talk about box to box midfielders now. Play, you know, in the modern game about midfielders getting getting up and down. You know, we had them in 1990-91. Um, and then if you go defensively, you had Glyn Creaser, who was a rock. You had, you, you had Andy Kerr, you had Matty Crosley. Uh, Johnny Granville was in, was in goal at the time. And then obviously Paul Hyde came on board. And then you, you then into, introduced the likes of the Jason Cousins of this world and, 
and and what have you. We we had we had Steve Thompson, um, you know Kim Casey. We had Mark West. We had we had a really really good a good group of players, a good squad of players, each with different qualities and very good qualities. So from a from a forwards perspective you know, you were always going to get opportunities because obviously we had great attacking options. And it must be such a fantastic time to be involved with the club as well because, you know, you'd had the, the move from Lokes Park to Adams Park and, and the move from non-league to for the Football League and also, you know, going to Wembley as well and being involved in, you know, the, the FA Trophy and the, and the playoffs as well. Yeah, well, look, you know, obviously I, I was fortunate because I, I sort of came on board in 1991, which was the the first year that there was at Adams Park. So, um, so I was fortunate from that point of view. And then obviously we went on to the trophy and weirdly enough, when Martin O'Neill signed me, you know, he actually said, I, I, we, we, we won't win the league this year. We, you know, we, we're, we're probably just a few players short, but I think we've got a great chance of winning the FA trophy. And I came on board when we were, we were playing, um, I think it was Northwich Victoria in the quarterfinals. Um, and Westy was playing with injections. He wasn't a hundred percent fit in his knee. Obviously, we won that, and then we played Altrincham in the semis over two legs, and Altrincham at the time were going for the title. So, the, so the the FA Trophy was was the objective that year, and then obviously we finished runners up the second year, and then and then naturally the you know the, the third year we we won the trophy and and um, and we won the league, and to this day we're still the only club to have won the league and the trophy in the same year, um, or the last club should I say, not the only club, the last club. Um, so yeah, it was it was a great period of time because obviously it was a new ground, um, and we were getting big crowds then. You know, we were getting you know averaging five and a half, six thousand. So, um, the, you know, the directors they had great ambition. They wanted to become a football league club. So, you know, if you take the support, the manager, the directors, and the squad that we had, the squad of players we had, everything was geared around to gain in promotion and, and obviously we were fortunate fortunate enough to do that are there any particular matches that really stand out that you played uh, perhaps yourself especially well in or w- was great to play in well i i think you know i think if you if you look at if you look at wickham really i i, I think i think the fa2 the two fa trophy finals were, were, were fantastic because you know if you look at where i'd come from from non-league football you know you, you don't although you have aspirations of wanting to become a professional footballer you know, you, you you you've got to deal with, with with where you are at the time, and and you're playing at the highest level of non-league football, um, and obviously your goal then is 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 to actually play in an FA Trophy final, and and, and I was lucky enough to play in two, as as were some of the other players. And if you take the 19, you know, the year we won the we won the trophy in the league in the same year. You know, we also won the Champion Shield three years on the trot, and we got and that year we got beat in the Drinkwise um, final as well. So you know, we 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 had a we won three out of four trophies at non-league level that you can win, but arguably we were the you know we were I was part of probably the best non-league team in the country. So you know, they were great times. Um, obviously, the two FA Trophy finals were great. Um, so so that non-league era that we had at Wickham it'd be difficult to sort of say one game stood out. Um, I just think as a whole, that whole from 1990 to 93, when we got promoted, that that sort of two to three seasons was fantastic throughout. And those names that you mentioned as well, obviously a fantastic um, group of players to watch on the pitch, but must have been fantastic to be a part of as well. Both uh, fantastic in their dressing room too. Yeah, look, we, we, we had, the weird thing is we, we well, not weird, the great thing was we had we had great team spirit, and what was interesting when Martin O'Neill signed me, you know, it wasn't just about me coming in and and being, you know, obviously performing, you know, what he wanted me to do. It was it was actually whether or not you could integrate with the rest of the players. He was he was he was very big on on team spirit, you know, players getting on together, and we did. You know, uh, it's really weird because even to this day, you know, we, we we still we still communicate. We obviously we can't because of lockdown, but prior to lockdown, we were seeing each other once, twice a year, whether it was golf or, or going out for a drink. So that that um, friendship of la- has lasted sort of twenty five, twenty six years. And uh, you, you know, any team that's successful, you know, they'll always tell you the players that you you get on as a group. 
Um, you have a great team spirit. Obviously, you've all got to be able to play naturally. Um, you've got to have, have hunger and desire. But equally as well, you know, you fall out with each other, not in a personal way, but in a footballing way. And, and, and that's a good thing because teams that are successful, you know, from, from, a, from a footballing perspective or whatever the team sport is, you don't always see eye to eye. But it's, it's each individual's desire and determination to want to succeed that actually sometimes makes emotions spill over but equally you know you, you still remain friends and we all have for the last 25 years and what's it like playing under Marta O'Neill as well because especially considering you know what, what he went on to achieve as well it must have been great to be sort of uh, playing under him during that part of his career well it was because I you know I, I remember watching him in the 82 World Cup uh, for Northern Ireland in Spain when you know when he when he was captain I remember watching the two European Cup finals as we were there when he was at Nottingham Forest so I, w- I was well aware of him as, as a as a player as an international player and obviously you know for somebody who was in non-league football and and obviously went into the old fourth division and then was wanted by you know a player of his caliber who then had who, gone into management it, you know it, it's, it, you take it as a as a great honor but also a great feather in your cap and what what was very good about him was as well he, you know he was quite happy to talk about his times at Nottingham Forest and share his stories and what have you and um and and he was he was certainly a player's manager very very focused very you know you know single minded in, in terms of where he wanted to take the club you know, when I signed in 1991, you know, the, the goal was to gain promotion. It was talking about, you know, it was always then talking about getting into the football league. That was the only goal. And so as players, we were very focused. He was he was a good man. He was, a, you know, as a person, he was a good man. Um, but he was also, like most managers who were successful, he was ruthless and not somebody you would cross. So was he at Norwich when you went there as well? Yes, he was. He signed me from Norwich uh, at Norwich um, when I was at Stoke. I wasn't on a great time at Stoke. It was a, it was a, it was a bad bad move for me, Stoke. You know, my wife was pregnant with with my first son, and in hindsight, I, I should have I should have stayed put. But Swindon had got relegated from the Premier League. Myself and Jan were scoring a lot of goals in the Championship, and they they had to balance the books. and And it was sort of you know it wasn't do you want to go? Is you have to go, and. I shouldn't have gone. I should have. I should have dug my heels in. But I went, um, and it was a, it, it was a bad decision. But fortunately, Mike Sherry, who was at Stoke at the time, sorry, he was at Norwich at the time, wasn't enjoying being at Norwich. So you know, we were fortunate enough to to, to do a swap deal. So it worked all out quite well. Although Martin resigned seven de- seven weeks after he signed me. That must be a really nice feeling, though, when a manager you played for before kind of brings you in again when he's at another club. Yeah, yeah, it was, and and. Um, Again, you know, I was very lucky. I went into a team that had got relegated from the Premier League. Some very, very good players, you know, Ian Crook, you had Brian Gunn, you had Mark Bowen, um, John Newsom, you had Rob Newman, uh, you know, you you had a lot of players, um, Robert Fleck, Ashley Ward. You had a lot of players who had, who had played a lot of Premier League football. And, and you know, and, I, and for me, I was really looking forward to it because I felt if he would have stayed around... Um, for that season, we'd, we'd have, you know, he was second when we, we were second when he left, and we we um, ended up finishing in the bottom half. Um, if he'd have stayed around, we'd have most definitely we'd have got promoted back to the Premier League. And apart from wanting to work with him again, obviously, my main goal for going to Norwich was, I, I truly believe that we would have got promoted to the Premier League, and that that was that was my goal because obviously I had a, a taste of it, and it, it, you know, it was a great experience. Although I learned a lot from it, and I, and I made a few mistakes whilst I was at Swindon personally um, from, a, from a footballing perspective. And I, th- I saw that as an opportunity to sort of get back into the Premier League. But, you know, he, he didn't get on with Robert Chase, who was the chairman at the time, um, and um, obviously he resigned. It must be great for sort of advert for the club, if you like, for, for Wickham, that you came back for a second spell initially on loan and then, and then signed again. Yeah, because, you know, I, I, I'd sort of... You know, I, I'd, I'd gone to Norwich, and um, from Norwich, I went, I went to, um, I went to Wickham from Norwich. But I was actually offered another contract at Norwich. Mike Walker, who, who was a really nice guy, fantastic guy. You know, he offered me another deal, but it, it was only a year, and I wanted two. Um, and also, as well, my wife was pregnant with my my youngest boy, and um, I, I wanted a little bit of an extra security, obviously, um, of two years as opposed to one. 
but more importantly you know i'd been away for the birth when my oldest boy was born i was away for that birth or you know well i was i actually saw i was there for the birth but i was away a lot of the time for the for the early parts of his being a newborn up to one year two year old and i didn't want to make that same mistake again so i'd made a decision a conscious decision that i was going to come back to wickham i turned down a three i got offered a two year at wickham i turned down a three-year deal at chesterfield on more money and i was aware that fulham were, were also you know interested and norwich had only offered me a year's deal and i and i, I you know i spoke i spoke to my wife about it and uh we both agreed that if, if I could get two years out of Norwich, that I would stay at Norwich. But if not, then I would come back to Wickham and, and I would sort of take the two years there and, and, and see what happened. And has it been really nice following the club? Obviously, after the time that, that you've left, you've done kind of like media stuff. You've been been a sort yeah. of a, a kind of pundit with Phil. People, people obviously know you're you're co-commentating from him, and you're a guest with Alan Hutchinson on a on a former Wickham radio station, which which was a, a nice to have you on that that show as well. Yeah, because, you know, look, look, you, I, although I started my career at, uh, at Lincoln City, you know, for me, Wickham was was my springboard to everything that happened to me in football, whether it's good or bad, you know. And, and you know, if I look back over my career, I look back at, at my ability as, as, as a player technically. I can't really complain at what I achieved. Um, I wasn't the best technically. Um, I was an athlete. That's what I was. You know, my game was all based about being an athlete, being able, being able to physically impose myself on on centre halves, being able to run the channels, obviously score goals. But I knew my strengths and weaknesses, and 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 you know, and, and Wickham was my springboard to what I considered to be a very good career, one that I enjoyed, irrespective of whether it was a good or bad time at a club, and and. You know, so I got a lot to thank them for, and and you know, if I if if you know if I can go if I can go back and I can help, I would and I will. Um, so obviously, I want them to do well. You know, sort of from me leaving to where we are currently. It must have been so pleasing to watch them grow from kind of as you say when when you were playing and through you know League One and League Two. Um, obviously, not in that order, but it must be so, so fantastic to now see them in in the second tier. Is that something that you could, you sort of saw in a progression? You think, oh yeah, this will be a team that that can make it to the championship. Well, look, you you know, you always any team you play for, you always want them to do well, and and you know, I have the same, I have the same, uh, you know, um, thoughts for Swindon. I want to see them do well. I want to see Norwich do well. But but you know, if you look at look, in fairness, if you look at at, at Wickham, I think if you speak to all Wickham supporters, it would have always been a dream that they would get the opportunity to play in the Championship. The reality of it happening. Whether whether you thought it, you would think it would happen is we we don't know, but you can argue that maybe the pandemic was fortuitous for them. In fact, that you know the way the league was then restructured, it, it gave them that opportunity. And in fairness to them, if you look at the playoffs, you know the games against Fleetwood and then the final against Oxford, they got there on merit. So, you know, look, I'm delighted they're in there. It's a fantastic time for the club. The only, I suppose, the only disappointment is the fact that they're not able to. I suppose maximise the commercial side of it um, from a point of view of, of supporters, you know, coming into the ground. Although obviously Boris has announced that that he's going to allow them in the grounds now. But if you actually look at it, if there wouldn't have been a pandemic and Wickham would have been in the Championship, I think it's conceivable to say that every home game would have been a sellout, you know. And so financially, that would have been huge for the football club, and it would have given them fantastic investment. You know, for hopefully them to maybe set up a youth system, but it's great to see them there. I think it's going to be difficult for them. I think we all acknowledge that, but it's fantastic that they're in there. And and obviously, you know, I'm, I'm sure they'll give a good account of themselves. And 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 hopefully, you know, uh, with a little bit of luck and a lot of hard work, um, you know, maybe they'll finish one one place above the the relegation three, and they'll they'll be able to stay in the league again for another year and hopefully maximise it from a commercial perspective. I mean, there does seem to be a great team spirit among the group, and also, you know, they seem to relish this underdog tag, don't they? Especially under Gareth, who seems to to really thrive on on the sort of backs against the wall kind of approach. Yeah, well, look, you know, they 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 have to adopt that approach, don't they? Because, you know, with the greatest respect, if, if you look at if you look at the squad, for all intents and purposes, it's a League One squad that that are, that are obviously you know battling in the Championship. So. I think every game for them is is going to be difficult. So you have to. It's like anything in, in any team sport. You have to find a way of 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 
I suppose, circling the wagons and 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 finding strength, you know, from within. You know, if you look at probably over the last three to four years, um, obviously Gareth, you know, where where he's had to and where where he where he can, he, he's he's looked to bring new faces in and strengthen. But if you look at the nucleus of the squad, you know, a lot of those players have been around for quite a while, and you know, and that that that's that's a, a huge factor. Um, you know, if you look at our squad from ninety from nineteen ninety to when we won the championship in ninety three, the nucleus of that squad was the same. What what the managers do, they add they add where they can. You know, they strengthen where they think it needs strengthening. But what they also do when they do that, they ensure that they bring in players who are, who are who are not going to be um, bad apples. And and obviously Gareth's done that. And um, you know, and and hopefully that team, I, the team spirit. The camaraderie will play a huge part in in what they achieve this year, but you know, obviously, he's got to be lucky with injuries. Um, and, and you know, like I say, if he can be lucky with injuries, hopefully, you know, they're in a position whereby, from a points perspective, they they they've got themselves in that little mix. They're not then they're not detached. So so they've got a chance. It's going to be tough, but they've got a chance. And I and I think the most important thing is that. You always want to have a chance and, and hopefully they, they can they can obviously maximise that and take advantage of it. And just finally, I'm sure fans will be interested to know kind of what you've been up to kind of post your, your footballing career. I know you've been doing a bit of uh, management in non-league level um, recently and, and obviously uh, I hope that your, your 2020 has been been good for, the, you know, uh, how, how lockdown has affected you, OK? But, but um, uh, what are you up to these days? Well, look, I, obviously I did the management bit. Um, you're, you're quite correct. Um at Windsor and Eton managed to win a win a title and then the, the chairman sacked me, um, which I suppose, you know, is 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 not strange in football, I guess. Um but obviously there was other things going on with the club and eventually the club got wound up by the end of revenue. For, um and it sort of put me off if I'm being honest with you a little bit in non league football. Um because the problem with non league football is unless you've got a chairman who's whose perspective are on, on football is, is a good one in terms of they cut their cloth accordingly. It's very easy to go in as a manager at non-league level and, and um, think you're doing a good job and, and things are moving along smoothly. And then all of a sudden the manager speaks, sorry, the chairman talks to you and tells you he's cutting the wage bill or he's doing this, that and the other. So if I'm being honest with you, that sort of put me off and I sort of came or what came out of it and, and just, just thought, you know, took a step back and, and, um, and I would obviously love to get back in, but, if I'm being brutally honest, um, you know, whether that happens or not, I don't know, but I'd, I'd want to go in at, at, you know, at a club that's got realistic ambition and a chairman who's got, you know, realistic ambitions. Um, work-wise, I, I work for a company that's, you know, fit out and refurbished commercial premises. And obviously the pandemic's not been great for our industry, but we, we're, we're okay. We're, we're still getting business in. And 2020 for me has been like most people. It's, it's been a, it's been a strange one. Obviously, um, we're all hoping now the fact that it looks like we found a, you know, a, um, a vaccination. Um, I would like to think that that's going to be rolled out um, quickly and effectively. So, you know, everybody who needs it can get it. Those those who are obviously in need of it, you know, the, the great the greater need than others can get it quickly. And then, obviously, I hope the rest of us can get it and. Um, we're hoping that 2021 is going to be a, um, a more positive year because I think overall 2020, you know, since March time has, has, has not been a great year and um, and hopefully 2021 will be a good one. No, definitely. Well, it's been fantastic to speak to you. Obviously, wish you all the best for the rest of the year and thank you so much for your time. Colin, my pleasure. Um, take care. God bless and have a Merry Christmas. Fantastic to hear from Keith. Uh, Merry Christmas to him as well. Indeed. Uh, interesting. He was the, he's the second former player that we've had now in a row um, to have talked about the, the difficulties of managing at non-league level. Yes. Don't do it. Yeah, well, I mean, you indeed, can do it. Yeah. You know, Dick Tumner and, and now Keith both saying, oh, you know, it's... It's, it's, it's a it's, tough, tough road to hoe. <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say, yes. <laughs> That might be an in-joke if, you, if you've not heard um, our... Uh, Recent, not uh, recent, but previous. Uh, uh, how many times are you going to get the words tough, tough, tough in, <laughs> into, into the Wickham Wanderers show? Don't forget, still to come on the Wickham Wanderers show, we'll hear from Gareth Ainsworth and also Jack Grimmer as well. And still time to get your thoughts into us uh, via Twitter at Wickham Sound using the hashtag TWWS uh, about what you're most looking forward to about returning to Adams Park. This is Wickham Sound. <laughs> Welcome back to the final part of the Wicked Wanderer show, uh, which we call Extra Time. 
In Wickham Wanderers terms, it's, it's a lot. Of, you get about six minutes now, don't you? <laughs> Which is approximately how long we've got left, actually. Indeed. It, 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 this is the equivalent of Rocky going down injured with about five <laughs> minutes to go, which he's done in the last two games. Uh, but I think he's been OK. Will it be three in a row? Uh, you never know, yes. Well, I, I think it depends on, on how we're doing. As we'll hear shortly, there's quite a, quite a tough, tough, tough uh, row of fixtures coming up. There is indeed, yes. And, and sort of quite, quite northerly in, in places. Uh, yes, yeah. The, the, there's a, a brutal week coming up uh, when it's uh, Preston away on Saturday, followed by Barnsley away on Tuesday. But talking of northern teams, uh, is Huddersfield northern, I suppose? It is, uh, yes, it? It, yeah, that's so really northern. They came to town on uh, Yorkshire. Tuesday. Yorkshire. Yorkshire. And got a, a, a nil-nil draw uh, with, with Wickham. That's the wrong way around of saying it, but uh, officially it'd be Wickham getting a nil-nil draw with them and a point. And uh, Gareth spoke to Bob after the game. I thought the great thing tonight was you wouldn't have known which side was in the Premier League last year. You wouldn't have known which side was was the lower league side. Yeah, uh, two years ago they were in Championship well, last year. <laughs> I, have to, I have to pick you off on that one, but um, <laughs> but they were, um, and they've still got their parachute payments coming in. They've got a lot of money. They've got some top top players, and they're a very possession based side with a with a manager who's uh, who knows what he wants and knows what he does, and uh, and he changed the formation many times during the game. You know, I don't know if in the press box you picked that up, but there was a lot of changes from their form- formation. And, and my boys handle it really well. Um, they, you know, they, they're really learning about this championship. We're keeping clean sheets. I'm really proud of where we are, just below that line. But one win will get us above that line, and uh, and that is fantastic to say after I don't know 12 or something games in the in the, in the championship. You know, so it's it's just awesome. Um, and the boys in there know exactly what this means to them. Um, they've scrapped for their careers. Some of League Two. Of being with me in League Two, you know, Anthony Stewart was on the on the pitch at Torquay, you know, back in 2013, and look at him now, you know. So it's just brilliant to see. Really proud, and uh, I say, just um, the rumours of those fans coming back would be awesome if that can happen. I mean, there's so many that I could name, but you know, Wickham players. Not talking about the lone players, Jack Grimmer, Anthony Stewart, Scott Cashkett, Fred. They all look like Championship players. Yeah, and and they are, they are, they deserve that tag because they are playing in the Championship and they're playing well in the Championship. I'll add all the boys to that. You know, I can Fenway as well. People said he couldn't play in League Two. He is now making a name in the Championship. How good is that for him? You know, and and, and Wickham Wanderers and you know Daryl Horgan representing his country, Gareth McCleary of Jamaica and International with. You know, numerous caps you know so all these things are are fantastic for this club and uh, really looking forward now to uh, to seeing just what we can achieve this season Um, I think we're giving teams a real room for their money and as long as that happens I'm a happy man was it one of the age-old things of Bayo not really getting any decisions from the tool uh, from the from the ref tonight? Well, the referees certainly uh, uh, in leagues one and leagues two. I asked for them to be professional. Now I've got professional referees. Um, I don't know if there's much difference, but uh, listen, we know that he he does rile referees up. You know, he's that big. He doesn't get much, um, and and he's not the only one. There's, there's a lot of big strikers who don't get decisions, but some of them are just ridiculous. You know, uh, and and it just. We're used to it, you know. We we shout all we can, but um, the fans maybe make a difference on that side of things. But uh, I mean, there was there was one in the their box which I thought he was just all, you know, the guy was all over him, um, and then he gets a foul. He, he gets fouled against him for for somebody running in the back of him, and it just it's beyond me sometimes. But um, listen, I talk about referees all night. I'm not going to do that. They are professional. It's a real tough job. We got a nil nil. It's a brilliant result for us. Um, let's see if we can start turning some of these draws into wins. And you mentioned the fans as well, very much thinking that if they were there tonight, possibly they would have sucked one of those goals in. Yeah, I keep saying that. That that, that terrace end there, you know, that's something else is different there. Wickham Wanderers, no one else in the Championship has a terrace, I don't think. And, uh, and so just having that there is different. And uh, we're different. We do things differently. Um, and I love being different. And if this different side can stay in the Championship for another year, that would be very different for football because everyone thinks we'll go down. I'm trying to prove that around. And we've got Derby on Saturday. Not a team that you would have thought would be down there uh, at the bottom. No, and they won't be at the end of the season without a shadow of a doubt. Um, so we've got to make the most of, uh, of our opportunities playing teams that may be in a, a little bit of a transitional period. Um, but sometimes that can be a dangerous animal. You know, we have to we have to study hard. We have to make sure we're, we're 
playing the right team. Um, I may have to rotate the legs, we'll have to see, but i um, very proud of what I've seen tonight and everyone's in contention. Great to be able to take that into the game against Derby at the weekend. Hopefully uh, another clean sheet, you never know. Uh, someone will be uh, having a key part to play and that will be Jack Grimmer and he was chatting to Bob after the game as well. I thought what was great about tonight and the last few games is that you all now, I know you are championship footballers, you now look like championship footballers. Yeah, I think you've, you've genuinely hit the nail on the head there. I think the first sort of five, six, seven games, I just think that the, the maybe that belief wasn't there. Um, we were all learning and I think we we have played against teams that are in the top six currently. Um, I think, you know, people sort of didn't really take on board just how um, good the opposition was that we were playing. We played against a good Blackburn side, a good Swansea side. We took Norwich all the way and they nicked one in the last minute. But I think for me, I think the Wickham of last season has finally turned up with that confidence, that belief I feel much more solid in defence as a defensive unit um, and I think yeah it's it's now a league game it's not necessarily a championship league game which has been huge for us and uh, and yeah it, it, I think that has is, is been a big reason as to why we've started to pick up points and three clean sheets in a road out at home yeah is, is a defender's dream if I'm being honest I think um, it's definitely you know Rocky's been called whenever he's called upon he, he does the business for us which he did last season I think he was very underrated last season The some of the points that he managed to get us um, in some saves at crucial times in games and he, he showed it again <clears throat> tonight and especially on Saturday against Brentford you know one, he got his hand to one that hit the post and I think it's it's definitely a team effort here and everyone takes pride in clean sheets uh, just if we can nick a few more goals at the other end then we'll be on our way we nearly had a Jack Grimmer goal tonight as well we did <laughs> I we did I, I, I it rolled to me and I thought just connect well which I did and I thought as soon as I left my foot I thought it's got a chance and then the defender clears it which was unlucky but um, yeah maybe if that gets through then it, it does nestle in the back of the net which would have been uh, yeah a, a truly great moment that's for sure what about the the lack of fans? How, how much are you? How, how pleased are you about the announcement this week that actually they'll be allowed back in? Fingers crossed soon. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm buzzing to be honest with you. I'm, it's been it's been so long since we've had fans. It's you know it's almost getting to that stage that you're used to not you, you're used to just coming out and hearing all the players shouting, the manager shouting, and things. And it's even to have you know one thousand, two thousand fans back in and make a bit of an atmosphere will be unbelievable. And uh, and you shouting, can I add? Yeah, yeah, and myself shouting. You might not hear me as much, which will be I'm sure great for everyone. Um, you might not hear me shouting as much, but um, I think not just for the players, but for the fans themselves. I think any lift that you know the sport can give anyone just now is is much much is is so needed and to get back in next month hopefully um would be you know a, a great way to end you know a year that i'm sure everyone wants to forget and we've got derby on saturday a game which i would imagine you're going into with a lot of confidence even though it's away well that's the thing i, I think you know we're sitting in there <clears throat> quietly disappointed that we've not not won tonight um you know they are a good side that keep the ball well but you know I think we could have maybe nicked something at the end there and I think that is the momentum and the confidence that you need to build um, like you said there I think you'll be going there and you know the pressure is on them, they're, they're Derby you know a, a big big club with ambitions to get to the Premier League and I'm sure they won't they won't want us coming and causing an upset so it's uh, it's some, hopefully something that, that plays in our favour and um, yeah we'll give it a, a, a good go and, and see what happens Really nice to hear defenders getting so pleased about uh, <laughs> <laughs> about clean sheets yes, yes yes and nearly yeah. scoring as well it was tough to hear about that yeah well. yeah absolutely yes he wasn't talking about laundry um, thank you very much uh, to Cathy uh, who has got in touch uh, saying uh, that she's very much looking forward to seeing the changes uh, that have been made at Adams Park uh, it, it does now look a little bit more like a championship ground uh, even with uh, just the digital scoreboards and uh, not the scoreboard the advertising yeah, yeah you know it really does it does look quite impressive um, uh, Alan saying he's very much looking forward to seeing uh, the lone players uh, actually in the, the flesh uh, definitely Josh Knight you know really really good Dennis Denron uh, you know yes they, they are very impressive uh, but also some of the non-loan players as well uh, Daryl Horgan uh, just you know works his socks off the whole time um, you know even when he came on on Tuesday night and you did think well yeah fair enough he's obviously played all of those games for the Republic of Ireland uh, you know still didn't didn't stop running the whole game you get to see footballers in the flesh rather than in supermarkets indeed yes absolutely yes uh, you I, probably still can spot them in supermarkets as well though. yeah I, I'm disappointed that nobody took us up on our, our footballers in, in supermarkets um, idea um, uh, we've also uh, got Joe saying um, that her son is very much looking forward to seeing Bodger. 
Oh, who wouldn't? Yeah, indeed. Absolutely. You know. Be interesting to know how Bodger spent his, his lockdown. <laughs> What was Bodger doing? Probably looking <laughs> Learning up, a new language? Looking up in the sky, which Bake. is what Bodger normally seems to be doing. Baking banana bread. Absolutely, yeah. He's, he's going to be on the next series of Bake Off, apparently. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. He, he's very into it. He's, he's Bodger. He's very good at patisserie making. <laughs> we must get Bodger on the show, won't I'm we? Not, I'm not even sure what that is. No, no. <laughs> patisserie making. Look it up. Sounds fantastic. Hope you enjoyed the show. It's been fantastic to get the thoughts of Pete Kirk on fans returning. Uh, brilliant to hear from Gareth and uh, the current players and the former player as well. Uh, join us next week for more on the Wickham Wanderer Show. Don't forget to look out for the podcast as well here at Wickham Sound.